and welcome back to Let's Play Live Alive. Last time, we made it to the point where we recruited the Mimic Mamet in both the Zero Kills and Full Kills playthrough. Now, we are more or less ready for the end of the chapter, but we are not in the file that I created in the last video. We're on a separate one that I made for a very particular throwaway purpose. Now, I'm going to try my best to win the abandonment battles here. And there is a boss fight at the end of them that I'm not sure that I can beat. Uh, the file where I do have the experience to win the fight, uh, the experience and the equipment, uh, it is, uh, I'm not able to abandon the mission anymore at that point because I already have Ryoma. Anyways, we're going to skip these first sets of scenes that we get, but there is another thing to keep in mind. There's going to be a very particular Easter egg I want to keep an eye out for. Now, I'm going to show you how to win these battles properly. Realistically, I don't really think you can win these until around level, uh, 8 or so. Uh... Usually, uh, level 7 is when you learn Phantom Butterflies, and this is the skill that'll help you win in the, these fights. What you want to do is you want to immediately open with a Phantom Butterflies, and ugh, that's bad luck that uh, we didn't get the kill there. Ooh, but we did get the sleep. And we just want to move in the direction of the guy that we either killed or uh, incapacitated. Oh dear. Not good. Okay, that's a rough start. Oh no! Oof, good thing you used the Kasari Gama instead. That uh, could have gone badly. Let's use uh, a, our Shrimp Rice Ball here. And basically, you want to hopefully take out one of these guys with the Phantom Butterflies just to get them out of your way. We also have access to uh, Dust Veil here to uh, deal with this guy. Oh dear. He's getting an explosive shuriken off, which is unfortunate for us. We should be able to win this once we can put some distance between us and these guys. Uh, as long as we can get, like, at least... Oh dear like six hits of phantom butterflies to go through, we can win this fight. Okay, we'll use a- oh, that was not the item I wanted to use there. That might cause me some problems later down the line, but uh, we'll try, we'll try. Okay, so now that I've uh, got some room to breathe, let's start hitting this guy with phantom butterflies. You generally want to try and just hit one of them with phantom butterflies, so that as many hits as possible are directing to one of them. There you see, we just need five hits to connect in order to take these guys out. And we win the fight, no problem. This was, uh, like I said, a very, very rough start to this fight. Hopefully he gets put to sleep. No sleep, but uh, we should be able to deal with this. What's this? Alright, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move up this way, I'm gonna use Firefly's Wake. Not gonna deal good damage, but I do have the uh, Genji Tabi equipped, so I'll be able to get some healing back from the fire tiles. And when they tick, they will kill him also. Here comes the explosive shuriken, unfortunate for me. Come on, fire tiles, tick for me. There we go. Get a quick absorption there. This phantom butterfly should hopefully take this guy out. Trust in the there we go. Now, unfortunately, winning this first battle does not do much for us. Also, pay attention to the background. There is a chance we'll see an Easter egg in this particular file. Alright, nothing to see there. And I'll just skip the battle going forward, battles going forward, because we have to do these battles a few times in a row. Alright, that's two down. I believe we need to clear four of these battles before we see something different than uh, what we have been seeing so far. No Easter egg yet, so we'll just uh, skip into the battle here. Alright, we're hanging in there. Now pay close attention. You see in the background there? There's the Watanabe clan. In this file, I actually killed the samurai that uh, dispatched them. Now you may be wondering uh, if there's a different scene for that. Unfortunately, no. You just go up to the attic and the treasures they t uh, take are gone. Alright, that's all the fights we've needed to clear. Be careful about those ninjas, though. Uh, do not stand directly adjacent to them, as they have a very powerful melee attack that can deal around 200 damage to you, and that's at level 8. It's an instant death attack any lower than that. Anyways, who is this? Master. It should have never come to this. How could you? No, I'll not hear it. You made your choice. You broke the code. There is but one punishment. Death. Only death. Even if it cost me my own life. I'll see it done. 
And thus, we are thrust into a completely soundless battle with Hayate. Very important, do not strand uh, directly diagonal of Hayate. He has the Wind Slash ability, a powerful move that Obotomaru can also learn for himself, and it does crazy damage. Uh, do not stand uh, directly uh, diagonal to him, or you will die due to that. Alright, looks like he's charging something up. Trust in the fantasy. I'm actually not sure what uh, his charge attack is. We may die to this, too. Uh, it's actually very nice if he gets poisoned. Alright, so, ooh, Phoenix Call. That's gonna hurt. Ooh, no! Unfortunately, defeated. My body fails me. Now, if you do manage to defeat the Hayate, it's still a game over at this point. Uh, uh, maybe later in the LP, I'll come back and actually defeat him properly. I, I was just really quickly trying to get something together. I could de get decently farther into uh, the uh, abandonment scenario. So we'll leave this file off to the side for now, and maybe I'll revisit it later so that we can uh, do that. But uh, what we really want to do is reconvene with Obotomaru of the present, where he has gone completely pacifist and has gotten a cool robot buddy to help him out. And we are going to proceed higher into the castle at this point. We want to take this path right here and head up the stairs. Now, uh, I hope you're excited to see... Uh uh, the Mimic Mamet slash Orobo in action, because in the Pacifist playthrough... Yeah, he just immediately freaks out due to a mouse and blows up those guards over there. Incidentally, if you happen to run into mice with Orobo, uh, Mimic Mavic in the party, he will freak out and challenge you to a battle, but it doesn't destroy him if you defeat him in those battles. So yeah, in a pacifist playthrough, you will, he will just immediately get broken. And you need to do this to get these zero kills, because otherwise you have to fight those guards. It's a fight you cannot flee, and you have no choice but to kill them. They do not password check. This is the only way to uh, get them out of the way. And, you know, technically, uh, Abodomaru did not kill uh, kill them. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no Orobo for the rest of the playthrough. That is rather disappointing. I kind of wish this gate was a little later into the chapter and we could actually use them for some boss fights. But that's just something we're going to have to reserve for the full kills playthrough. Anyway. It's him! Impressive. You've done well for yourself. <laughs> Though we are enemies, I must applaud your tenacity. Indeed, you are the first to have made it this far. In doing so, you have helped me unmask many cowards in my ranks, for which I am grateful. Yet, you found yourself in quite the predicament now. Surrounded by my elite guard, the cream of the Ode clan. And to make matters worse. My fitlock aimed at your heart. Get down! Who, who in blazes are you? That was too close. Skilled as you are, you're no match for a bullet. I took my time to line up that last shot, but... Who knows who I'll hit next? Anyone care to find out? You'll pay for this! Did you honestly think I'll let you keep me locked up in your dungeon forever? <laughs> <laughs> and did you think that I, the great Odeo, would be cornered so easily? 
what fools you are. I call upon the spirit of Miyamoto Musashi. <laughs> you will die by the hand of the greatest swordsman the world has ever known! Hmm, that was one of the more malicious invocations of Miyamoto Musashi I've ever seen. But yes, at this point, the prisoner, if you have not freed him from his cell, will spring himself and add himself to your party. Uh, if you did already recruit him, all of the samurai in this room, you'd have no choice but to kill them, because he would not feel the need to scare them off at this point. So this is a required step in order to get zero kills. Anyways, Musashi time. Oh, a shinobi. Long did I hope to cross blades with a worthy opponent once more. Mayhap your death will free me from my bondage. Anyway, we've got Musashi here. Fortunately, he's just a ghost, so he's not going to be a blip on our ethical radar. As you can see, he is resistant to quite a few things here. Uh, do we actually have anything that works good on him? As a matter of fact, we can huck shurikens at him, and hopefully deals decent enough damage. Well, it'd be better if they hit. Let's see. Uh, we want to try and uh, move him so he doesn't use his charge attack here. Uh, the prisoner's uh, warning shot can potentially uh, turn the face of the enemy. Uh, let's uh, get him healed off. We've got these healing items here, so we may as well utilize them. As well, get some status buffs from our uh, shrimp uh, rice balls. They were shrimp rice balls, right? Uh, and this is gonna bug me. Yes, 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 okay. I just wanna make sure. Let's go for a, not a North Star. Instead, let's back up and use the Wolf's Fang shot. Alright, so it looks like he's going to get another attack off. It's actually uh, desirable that he attacks the Hotomaru, since the prisoner does not really have much in the way of good armor. Uh, let's uh, move over here, hit him with a Shuriken Barrage. If we get hit here and that uh, causes more damage to us, then we can just uh, use another Shrimp Rice Ball. Let's see here. Uh, I actually want to hang on to my items here, but uh, let's go for the uh, Ode Shuriken. Heads up! and hopefully deal some decent damage there. Good enough, good enough. Okay, that's actually uh, really good. Uh, we'll have him uh, attack the prisoner. I'm going to try and get to his back here and hit him with a shuriken barrage. I'm not sure if this is actually the case, but it feels like your uh, accuracy is better depending on your position relevant to the enemy. If anybody knows for sure if that's like actually a thing in the game, please let me know, because it's always felt like that. Certainly, it's felt like uh, in the SFC version, moves deal more damage if you hit enemies from behind. Reaching level 9 has taught uh, Aboromaru an extremely important move, a really good one, Wind Slash. Incidentally, uh, he learns a different move in level 9 in the SFC version. He actually learns a, uh, a uh, water technique instead, which we'll probably see in due time in this version. But Wind Slash, incredibly powerful move, really good one. Uh, it's uh, just strong single target wind damage. Uh, maximum damage potential isn't as good as Phantom Butterflies, and it doesn't have the ailments, but it is much, much more accurate for only slightly less damage, honestly. Impressive. Never had I known defeat until now. Shinobi of the Enma. I will remember your name. And with that, Musashi has been freed. Now, let's actually get further into the castle here. A little hidden passage behind the poster, and we can make our way even further into the castle. Heading over this way... <laughs> oh no you don't! I will not let you harm Lord Ode. 
things can never be simple. Here is Yodogimi. One thing to note is that Yodogimi was actually in disguise earlier in the level. Uh, she is the woman that we killed that was uh, surrounded by the ninjas in the previous uh, part. And because she is also a ghost enemy, upon defeating her here, uh, Obotomaru will actually redact her from his running kill count. So that's why she doesn't count. We'll of course be seeing that more when I cut to the uh, kills playthrough later. But yes, this is why uh, that woman from earlier did not matter in the uh, running kill total, nor from uh, forbidding us from uh, actually uh, killing women. Since, uh, I mean, she's a ghost, so I guess she's not a living woman. It doesn't count. Incidentally, we will be coming up soon on the payoff for not killing any women. What have you done? Oh, so not exactly a great index there, because that was a weakness, but that is also uh, just, as you can see, wind slash, great range, good power, especially when the opponent ha is weak to it. It runs off of uh, Abotomaru's special attack, so be mindful of that. Lord Ode! Heading up the stairs, we're about to get our final reward for this chapter. Uh, well, not our final reward, but the last thing we're going to see before we get to the final boss. Uh, let me see, do we? Please there wait. we go. I wanted to repay you for helping me earlier. Please accept this gift. Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Maid Sash? Interesting. Good luck. Now, this woman only appears if you have killed no women up to this point. Yonogimi does not count in this uh, running total, obviously. Uh, as soon as you defeat her here, uh, Botomaru, if you killed her earlier, redacts the kill, as I mentioned previously. But if you wait a little bit longer... Forgive me. This is what I really meant to give you. It's a lacquered medicine box. Anyway, good luck. Now, uh, let's uh, first uh, take a look at that in the uh, item menu, the lacquered medicine box that we just got. This pot the potent curatives within can be used to restore HP to of all allies. Can be used repeatedly. However, that's not the only thing that the lacquered medicine box has going for it. If you equip it as an accessory, it gives a staggering plus 30 to your special attack. As you can see, the Maid Sash, on the other hand, not exactly that interesting an accessory. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually uh, gives us anything. It's a bit hard to tell from the uh, equipment menu. But, you know, it's extra defense. Now, the main reason you want to be mindful of this woman when you are on a full kills playthrough is that if you have killed any women up to this point, she will not show up, uh, excepting Yodogimi, which means you cannot kill her, which means you cannot get the 100 kills. So she is the reason why you have to... Uh, wait on killing any women. She's also another example of why it's better to play pragmatically, because the lacquered medicine box is uh, just such a good accessory to have. One last difference I want to remark on before we get to the final boss of this chapter is that uh, you absolutely, absolutely, if you're playing the SFC version and got the medicine box, you want to equip it on a Bodomaru right away. Not just for the 30 special attack it gives, but you will otherwise not be able to carry it forward into the game if you do not equip it on him. That is not not something you have to concern yourself with in the HD version, so don't be too mindful of that. If you'd rather use it as a battle item, that's uh, also perfectly valid. Anyway, beyond this, we're about to get into the final encounters of the chapter, so before we do that, let's wrap up our business in the SFC version, shall we? Alright, here we are in the SFC version, and as you can see, I have done quite a bit of powering up here. Oboro is actually at level 16, which is the last level you learn any skills in the game, meaning he has his ultimate attack. Now, that actually is kind of overkill. Uh, what I needed was just to get Oboro to level 8 or level 9. I forget which one it is exactly. Whatever skill or whatever level he needed to be at in order to get this skill, Fuma Shuriken, which I think is 8, is what he needs to be at. This is his most powerful damaging move, and it is very, very important for the bonus boss fight that we are going to be dealing with. Ryoma, he does not learn anything, so that's a no-go there. 
Now, the important thing to note about this version of the game is that the Lost Souls in the storeroom, they actually give 4 EXP per kill, regardless of what your level is, so you can actually power level quite a bit off of them, a lot more than you'd expect. Pretty interesting. That's neither here nor there, though. We're ready to try and hoist the sword off the wall. And naturally, things get a little rough for us immediately. You cannot have this blade. Leave this place at once. Well, I kind of want the blade. If you do not leave, you will die. And that immediately thrusts us into a fight against Majin Ryunosuke. So what we want to do here is we want to get uh, our most heavily armored character, which in this case is uh, Obero, and we want to have him just stand directly adjacent and charge up his most powerful move, Bronze Leaf. Uh, Ryoma's not going to do anything. Uh, we're just going to have him pass. And Orobo, he is going to be tossing Fuma shurikens like crazy. As you can see, good range here. A uh, decent AoE. And uh, it is instant activate. Huge, huge damage. Absolutely ridiculous attack. I actually don't care if uh, Ryoma gets taken out here. I, I just want him to tank attacks for me if he can. We will have uh, Obero use the uh, Bronze Leaf on him. As you can see, very strong... Uh, physical attack skill. There goes Ryoma. Again, I don't care if he gets taken out in this fight. I just want uh, Obero and Orobo to keep pelting this guy with their strongest attacks, and that should take him out pretty good for us. He's going to uh, eliminate uh, Ryoma from the fight, but again, not a big deal. Now, let's keep charging up Bronze Leaf here. If he decides to start attacking Orobo instead, I want to move him out, and I definitely want to revive him if I get the opportunity. Alright, so... Uh, Throw more Fuma Shurikens here. There we go. This is why I want Obero to stand directly adjacent to him. He will start using Road to Ruin, and with uh, Obero's really good uh, physical defense from like the armor, like the Genji armor, he'll uh, do just fine uh, tanking the Road to Ruins here. The Road to Ruins can debuff your stats, but it's not something I'm overly concerned about. What we want to do here is we want to use up our uh, Izanagi scroll to fully heal uh, up up Obero. We'll have him charge up another Bronze Leaf once his turn comes back around, and then uh, Orobo will off obviously throw another Fuma Shuriken. He should be able to survive one more Road to Ruin, although, frankly, at this point, we probably only need one more Fuma Shuriken to finish this guy off. We've done quite a bit of damage to him at this point. He only has around, like, a thousand HP or so. Yeah, there we go. We're fine. We're fine. With him taken care of, we can take the Muramasa off the wall. This weapon is absolutely cracked relative to anything else we can get in the chapter. As you can see, it brings our attack up to a cool 40, an absolutely massive bonus. So, let's get on out of here. Now, one thing that I want to draw attention to before we get out of here, we'll just run across and come across the, po the pot again. This pot, has I have been informed, and thank, to, thank you to Hannah Crucis in the comments for letting me know this, uh, if you feed it enough Kobans, it will teach you uh, Oboro's ultimate skills. Uh, I believe you need to feed it 10 Koban in order to learn Bronze Leaf via the pot. However, using those Kobans on it, first off, you need to uh, rescue, uh, what is it, Goyamon, just to get all those Kobans on a uh, kills playthrough. But also, uh, if you use all those Kobans on the pot, you will not be able to get uh, Orobo or the Mimic Mammoth. You will not have enough spares. Now, before we head into the uh, moat here, I want to update my save real quick. So let's save right here. And we want to move quick, as quick as we possibly can. Now, if you enter the moat with uh, the Mimic Mammoth in your party in the HD version, it will sink almost immediately. It will just be immediately destroyed permanently. In the SFC version, though, he l lasts long enough that you can get to the bonus boss in the moat, the Lord Iwama. So, we want to use the Bronze Leaf here. Uh, we will use a Polaris Single Blade. If we're lucky, we may be able to stun this thing. Not a huge deal if we aren't able to. Let's see, get hit with a Poseidon's Whip there. Fortunately, uh, well, that's unfortunate. Obero does have the stats to, uh, or the defensive stats to uh, outlast that. But unfortunately, uh, the status ailments, not much we can do about that. Obero, he obviously is just going to be using his Fuma Shurikens here. Now, this is a move that makes this fight pretty annoying in the HD version. Water Call, as you can see, covers the field in the water tiles. And uh, Lord Iwama will get uh, healed by those water tiles fully. Let's see, we want to uh, 
Ryoma to just come over here, use a Ten Musu to uh, recover everyone. Or he gets healed for every uh, water tile that he's overlapping, so he'll undo like 200 damage uh, to himself whenever he uses his attack. Super annoying. Not dealing as much uh, damage with uh, the uh, Fuma Shurikens uh, as we were against, uh, what is it, uh, Majin Ryunosuke. Nice, Bronze Leaf actually doing really good damage here. And you know what, it honestly, to, uh, if it risks a retaliation from the boss, it's really not worth it to uh, have Ryoma do anything here. So we'll just have the uh, Mimic Mammoth throw out his Fuma Shuriken. Once again, we'll have uh, Oboro charge up a Bronze Leaf. That's just his best option here. This guy has quite a bit of HP. Uh, I believe he has around uh, 2,000 HP. That's definitely how much he has in the uh, HD version. It's also less realistic to get to uh, level 16 in the HD version. Uh, you just don't get as much experience in this version of the game as you do in the uh, SFC version for fighting the Lost Souls. So this fight can be a lot tougher there. Not even considering the fact that Orobo just straight out will not make it to this fight. He sinks almost immediately. It is really obnoxious actually, but uh, it's what you gotta deal with. Alright. This, uh, this fight is definitely worth your while to uh, go through, though. Because the uh, reward you get for doing it is not experience or anything. I like seeing this ride, though, because it just uh, reminds me how great uh, Odorobo's physical defense is. And also, it's just fun to uh, see the boss debuff itself for not really much of a gain. We should be almost done with this fight. He's getting there, he's getting there. Once again, I'll just have a... Ooh, I was gonna say I'll have Ryoma pass, but uh, might be a good idea. Oh, never mind. Alright, so Bronze Leaf. Hopefully this uh, next barrage of attacks should take him down. He has to be getting low on HP at this point. I do not care about your rise. Not a terribly difficult fight. This fight's a lot more problematic in the HD version because of those water field tiles. Uh, it can be a really precarious situation to try and keep him from just recovering so much of his HP. There it goes. Oh, no, he's still hanging in there. Go, good on you, Ryoma. Of course, this guy has turned his back to me. Bronze Leaf is coming out. Yeesh. I, I seriously would have thought he'd have been done by now. Alright, let's, uh... Oh, never mind. There goes Ryoma. I was gonna say, let's get Ryoma back in. Oh! I could have sworn he was dead. Okay. Okay, Ryoma. Okay. Uh, I, I'm saying his name. Uh, he, I know it's, uh... Or, wait a minute. Uh, I'm getting my versions mixed up here. In the uh, HD version, he's the prisoner. In this version, he's Ryoma. It's, uh... uh I'm having trouble keeping it all, all together here. Let's use up uh, one of our Ten Musus here. I am staggered that this guy is just hanging in here uh, so effectively. Come on, take him out. Bronze Leaf, let's go. Sorry, this is not the most exciting fight in the world. There we go. They could have at least given us the boss music for this. Alright, but with that, Orobo will get to level 12, which is not going to matter. Shuriken Tail Flick, cool. And for DD defeating that guy, uh... Okay, uh, I don't think we got what we were supposed to there. Uh, okay, you have a chance, uh, when you defeat him, of getting a Golden Scale. The Golden Scale gives you, uh, I want to say it's 30 special attack? Uh, we did not luck out and get the drop there, so we're not gonna get it. I'm not gonna fight that guy again, just because it's really tedious, and I don't need the reward, honestly. Now, I'm actually idling in here because I do want Orobo to break, so let's, uh, just, uh, frame skip a little bit get him to, uh, sink eventually. That sounded like the bell. Eesh. He's, uh, he's hanging in there. He's hanging in there. I, I got respect for the guy. Do we need to leave the water, actually? Let's try leaving it. Uh, he's still functional. Yeah, he, like, he sinks immediately in the HD version. Okay, uh, a robo's hanging in there, so you know what? I'm just gonna go look for a pit that I can fall in to, uh, break him. Uh, so let me go take care of that. And once that is done, we're going to return to the section of the, uh, castle that we have made it- oh, There we go! Okay, that's what I needed. Now that that's taken care of, let's return to the section of the castle that we managed to reach, uh, in the previous video. 
All right, here we are back past the Tea Master's room, and now we are ready to move on with the rest of the chapter. Now, of course, in the HD version, the Mimic Mammoth just ran up and blew these guys up, but we've already drowned him in the moat, so he can't actually do anything here. We're just going to walk up, and these guys are of stern temperaments. They don't have too much to say. They also do not have much of a chance in hell against us at this point. Uh, may as well show off some of the other attacks we have at our disposal here, like Shadow Mirror. Got so many techniques here that uh, we just didn't have a chance to learn in the HD version. Wow, <laughs> nice one. Not overly concerned with what these guys can do in terms of playing the flute. I'm not uh, really worried about what a flutist can do to me. But yes, you have no choice but to kill these guys, so uh, you cannot come up here uh, without a Robo if you are going into a Zero Kills playthrough. Likewise, uh, if you have uh, a Robo, you cannot uh, get through this uh, part while killing these guys. Bit annoying like that, and a bit counterintuitive. Keep hitting that guy with the Shadow Mirror. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, go for another uh, skill here. Uh, let's see... Uh... Let's go for uh, Phoenix Fire. We'll get up close and uh, we'll uh, have uh, Ryoma back off so we can charge this up. That guy was uh, not exact. well actually I think he was stunned. He wasn't able to do much about this. As you can see, it doesn't really compare to our other attacks, but it has a massive AoE. I've slain 78 people. We're getting close to that 100 benchmark. Heading into this area, unfortunately, we do not have uh, Ryoma able to bust in to scare these guys off for us. So we have an actual encounter to deal with here. As long as we, the Eight Great Swords, are here, no one will get close to Lord Ode. I cast Phoenix Fire right at the start of the fight and just immediately killed all those guys, so I didn't really feel like it was worth it just to show me rotating Ryoma in place until it went off. We've slain 86 people. <laughs> well done. You've shown me how worthless the men in this castle really are. After all, they did let my sworn enemy get this close to me. But that's of no consequence. I shall show you one who should be more than a match for you. Come, Musashi! Miyamoto Musashi! <laughs> the most skillful, skillful swordsman that ever lived! And yeah, Musashi is the same in this version, so I'm just gonna hit him with Bronze Leaf and call it a day. Shinobi? Ah, well, I guess it's just bad luck for you that we cr now cross swords. Have at you! It was actually really annoying to hit him with Bronze Leaf because he kept targeting Obero and pushing him out of the way, interrupting the charge. Superb! How many men could defeat the great Musashi? Obotomaru, I shall not forget your name. Alright, well, with him taken care of, we gotta go deeper into the castle. And if you remember, we get stopped right here. Ow. Ow. You pierced my very heart. Is it so wrong for a princess to fall in love with a shinobi? Don't be a fool! Oreo doesn't have any daughters? <laughs> you must be the man that Lord Oyo was expecting. You fools. If you fell for that, you must be really thick. If only you had accepted my offer. And with that, Yonogimi is defeated. Master Oyo! I would like to say, I don't think it's possible to fight uh, Amakusa Shiro on a uh, zero kill kills run. Uh, if there is a way to do it, let me know. Then it looks like that princess wasn't one of the 86 dead. I have slain 85 people. There, uh, Obero uh, updates his kill count, so now we are down to 85. Not that that's really going to matter, because... Please wait! I want to thank you for sparing me. Will you accept a small gift? No! Kill! That's just like a man! 
And it turns out the uh, maid was in reality a Kunoichi, so uh, she was uh, trying to get our goat in reality, possibly. Or perhaps she was being genuine. I don't know. Regardless, we're going to kill her anyway, so we can uh, bronze uh, leaf through these partitions here just to get to her. And again, the reason we need to spare all those women up to this point, I just want to hammer this point home, this woman does not show up unless we uh, spare all the women up to this point. Now that we've actually seen and slain her, though, we can now go back and kill every female resident of uh, Ode Castle. So we've got a bit of backtracking to do. Let's go. Alright, so our first order of business is this woman that we spared previously, but now we can kill her and get to her pop pot. I have slain 87 people. We can take the junk in here now, but it's not any better than the stuff we've gotten here. Although there is another bit of money to grab. Nice, nice. Uh, one thing to note about uh, Obero's uh, Wind Slash, his Blade of Wind, uh, it actually pierces through uh, things blocking your uh, line of sight. So uh, in contrast to like a shuriken throw, it can actually uh, hit the uh, Kunoichi through the partitions. Now, we've got more women to slay here. Eek! And as you can see, this is just a woman, so we're probably going to feel bad for killing her. Or at least I would feel bad if, uh, you know, there was a bit more pathos uh, trying to be inflicted on you here. But there is not much to worry about. We'll take out this other woman, too. 88 people slain. Let's go. Uh, come on, get over here. 89 people slain. Once again, another Kunoichi disguised as a humble maid. A rather devious trick that uh, Obero, well, maybe he fell for it, but uh, it didn't really matter. Now over here... Hey! Who are you, Wink? Here we have the uh, Okome, Okame no Kata, or the Relentless Maid. Now this person in the game, she seems to be a bit more into Obero. Uh, her... Uh, Attitude towards you is a bit more, uh, shall we say, on uh, the uh, malevolent uh, side in the HD version. Not sure if that's dub text or if uh, that is a legitimate change across all scripts there. As you can see, she has about 300 HP to chew through. But the most notable thing about her is that you cannot deny her love. To uh, be fully done with her, you need to kill her 16 times. Or I should say defeat her 16 times. Who are you, Wink? You can't deny my love. So yeah, we'll be dealing with her quite a bit throughout uh, our backtrack through the castle. Thankfully, any area that she spawns in, she will always appear in. So you can just endlessly uh, enter and re-exit an area after killing her to deal with her that way. Mmm, don't come any closer, Wink. You can't deny my love. One thing to note about her is because she is a relatively high level enemy that respawns endlessly, uh, you can actually use her as a way to get uh, some experience without uh, invalidating a zero kill run if you are going for a pacifist playthrough. You do need to be mindful of how many times you defeat her, of course, or she will eventually die, but it's a good option for uh, padding out uh, your levels if you're feeling like uh, a lot of the uh, challenges are a bit too much for you. Now, if you remember, we entered this room and opened the treasure and spared the woman. The woman's gone now, and the treasure is seemingly refilled. Girl in the box? Wink. It's locked from within. Hmm. I wonder. Perhaps we can pull a little trickery here, and a little frame skip. Is he gone? Once she pops the box open, we can kill her. Eek! With that, we've gotten 90 people slain. We are making it, so let's uh, make our way back to the residential manor, because if you remember, there were a ton of women there. Hey, who are you, Wink? You can't deny my love. Really wish I had the medicine box. That would actually make my wind blades a bit more consistent at one-shotting her. Mmm, don't come any closer. You can't deny my love. 
Uh, yeah, I have to wonder, does winking make a sound? One thing I'd like to note is that uh, Obero actually reached level 17 from that fight. Uh, this is the only chapter where you can realistically get past uh, level 16. And honestly, like, the, the prehistory chapter, I, I can't really imagine you being able to get much further than level 13 or 14 in that chapter because your experience gain just slows down so much. But in this chapter, well, in the SFC version anyways, the experience stays pretty consistent up to this point that uh, it's pretty easy to get to high levels. Hey, who are you, Wink? You can't deny my love. Don't worry, we'll be done with this woman soon enough. Uh, speaking of women... I entered the wrong room there. Anyway, speaking of women, also, uh, she has a high tendency of dropping maid sashes, which is a little bit of a way to pad out your physical defense, if you so desire. Not that it really matters for us at this point. Speaking of women, there are a whole bunch of them over here. Nope. Kill. Eek! We are just on a rampage here, and we've got, wow, lots to take out here. That's five altogether. Another five down, another 96 in total. Well, not another 96. We've got 96 in total. Uh, there was one Kunoichi mixed into that batch of women. Hey, who are you, Wink? You can't deny my love. I'm gonna keep saying that. I have to wonder what Ryoma's thinking of all this up to this point. Uh, <laughs> we've kind of lost the plot as far as defeating, uh, what is it, Oreiho is <laughs> at this point. This all seems pretty unnecessary in-universe. Uh, let me see, real quick. I just want to update my save, uh, just, uh, I don't know why, I feel paranoid about something. But, uh, this guy, he only appears if you look at the peephole in the attic that shows the scene of him spinning the woman. Speaking of the woman, let's just, uh, kill her. No! Such cruelty. 97 people slain. Anyways, if you walk onto the bedding after killing the woman, <laughs> I guess it's just karma. Secret technique! 100 revolutions! As you can see, Obero is now going for his own spin cycle. If you do not know uh, his level 13 technique, uh, or at least level 13 in this version, the game Top Spin, uh, you will learn it from participating in this scene. It is a terrible move that does barely any damage, and I think the only thing it does is that it can rotate the enemy. Not really that helpful, especially because uh, Ryoma can do that with his warning shot. Anyways, let's just kill the old man. With that, we are at 98 slain, and only two kills remaining. One of them, of course, is the Relentless Maid. Who rather annoyingly still has a bit of fight left in her, but we're getting, uh, we're more than halfway to killing her all the numbers of time we need to. And of course, there was one woman we spared in the entry, uh, building. So, let's make our way over here. And let's get this woman, get us up to 99 kills. Right, get over here, lady. Lady, lady, I know you want to live, but, uh, lady, get, uh, get over here, get over here. Yeah, no, 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 you're not, you're not escaping. I'm like Samurai Jack here. There is no escape. 99 people slain. We've only got one person left to take care of, and you already know who it is. Uh, I'm actually going to move up back to the residential manor, just because she spawns in an easier place to just repeatedly uh, rematch her. So let's make our way into here. Let's, uh, not this way, uh, let's uh, go into the back area here, since she just appears in this hallway, and let's get to start killing. I won't forget this! I've slain 100 people. And with that, we have killed all 100 people. It's worth noting that the uh, Relentless Maid actually has a chance of dropping a rarer Maid Sash that gives you a pretty sizable bonus to your special attack. I believe it's around 20 or so. And unfortunately, uh, we cannot get back into the castle since we... Uh, actually, do we have a key? Uh, bu -bu -bu. I don't think we have a key. Yeah, we, we don't have a key, so uh, we'll just uh, backtrack the old-fashioned way. And besides, we're cutting back to the HD version again. We'll briefly cut back just to see a little variation that we can get in this version, as well as check out some dialogue. But otherwise, the 100 kills playthrough has been completed. There is no specific reward for getting 100 kills. Why am I going this way? Uh, like I was saying, there's no specific reward for getting 100 kills. It is purely for the satisfaction of the accomplishment, and it's pretty difficult to accomplish. 
it uh, in and of itself just because of the, the ways you can screw yourself out of the kills that you need to get. But I've done it. We've made it. We've gotten 100 kills. We are all set. We have gotten plenty of blood on our hands, and we are ready to take on the Lord of the Castle. <laughs> to be real with you, uh, you, on the whole, just getting blood on your hands will get you a greater number of rewards. It is possible to get the uh, rewards from the bonus bosses on a pacifist playthrough, but it is very boring, very tedious, and requires even more particular routing. And it definitely you need to keep a, a robo around, or the Mimic Mammoth, Mimic Mammoth around, in order to deal with uh, the uh, bonus boss... Uh, Man, I already forgot his name offhand. Man, I, I gotta keep this stuff, uh, <laughs> and mine better. But whatever, you, you know what I mean. The guy was guarding the sword. With that all said and done, let's move on. You again. That you continue to trouble me can only mean one thing. You must have defeated the great Musashi. Filthy rats. Creeping about my castle, uninvited. It seems I'll have to deal with you, myself. Do not underestimate me. For I, Lord Odeo, will not be brought low by vermin like you! Hey, right back at you, Odeo. You better watch out, because I am wielding a medicine box, and you are about to see what that does for me. With that lacquered medicine box, our wind slashes will deal some pretty potent damage here. We'll just have uh, the prisoner back up here, hit him with Wolf's Fang. Not really matter too much. Uh, I'll be honest, the prisoner is a lot weaker in this version of the game compared to the SFC version. In particular, his North Star ability compared to the Polaris Single Slash ability just doesn't really deal that match, so or deal that much. So I wouldn't really rely on him for uh, too much in combat. No, I'll not allow it. Be at peace. All right, that was uh, remarkably easy for a final boss, if I'm gonna be real. Is that really all there was to it? <laughs> you amuse me. This small chamber ill suits our struggle, wouldn't you agree? To the roof, then, where we may face one another beneath a starlit sky. I'll be waiting. You weren't expecting this to just be a one-phase boss fight, and yes, I am aware, I was aware of the door to the south earlier. I was waiting on going through it for this reason, since we're gonna head through it anyway. Let's go. At long last! <laughs> Up here, you two! Mark well this moment as I, Odeo, unveil to you the noble visage of he who will rule Japan forevermore! Well, I uh, is a big boy. Anyways, uh, Ode, Ode, Ode Io has uh, turned into the monstrous frog. Uh, I already lost track of what his name was. Uh, Gamma Heavy. So now we have to uh, deal with him in our own way. As you can see, he's resistant to Shuriken Barrage, and uh, that's a bit annoying. But he's per perfectly vulnerable to Wind Slash still, so... That's what we're gonna go with there. Just back up, start peppering him with wind slashes. About six of those will take him down, no problem. Let's hit him with a warning shot, just to disorient him. There we go. As you can see, he has to waste time turning back around to try and face us. We can hit him with another wind slash, and that's just what we're gonna do. Alternate between wind slashes and warning shots, and hopefully deal with him in that way. There we go. 
Another wind slash there. Boy, that, that just turned him around fully. <laughs> we're we're kind of stun locking him right here. Alright, hit him with another warning shot. Hopefully this one uh, also rotates him. Yep, and that interrupted his charge. Uh, I'm honestly starting to feel a little bad for this guy, but uh, hey, that's uh, <laughs> he, he's evil, so uh, just forget him anyway. Ooh, Bloodsucker, interesting. A little bit of damage back for him there. That's uh, rather frustrating, but once again, just keep peppering him with warning shots. He has to waste so much time. Ooh. Uh, actually, let's pass. Oh, darn. I was expecting that to go off before he, uh, or I was expecting uh, the prisoner to get his turn before we managed to, uh, or he managed to get the charge attack off. All right, hit him with another warning shot. I'm not overly concerned about the uh, poison damage from the tiles. At this point, we've got the fight on lock. Uh, if we're lucky, this wind slash might even deal enough damage to kill. Now nah, I'm not, not even close. Uh, do I want to give the honors to the prisoner? Will he be able to finish him off? Well, I can interrupt his charge attack anyway. There we go. Alright, looks like uh, Abonamaru is going to get the uh, finishing blow. So, you know what? Let's uh, go forward and let's hit him with a good old shadow slash. Good riddance. This land deserves better than a twisted tyrant who cares only for himself. Let alone one who forsakes his very humanity in the pursuit of power. Shinobi, you've proven yourself a man of honor and mercy. And so I have a request. I have made many enemies in my life, and have learned that it's often better to stay your hand than to fight. For a blade unsheathed must draw blood. Thus is the cycle of violence and vengeance renewed. But not this day. For you did not kill without cause. Therefore I bid you, take this sword. I can think of none more worthy to wield such a weapon. In truth, I'm glad to be rid of it. And there we go. We get uh, the Prisoner Sword, Mutsuno Kami. Uh, this is, uh, what was it called? Ah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so bad with names. Uh, it was like the Yoshiyuna and the, the SFC version. But this is the sword that you only get if you manage to get through the chapter with zero kills. And obviously his comments are a little bit different if you killed any people. Uh, this sword... Has the exact same attack value as the Muramasa you get from defeating the bonus boss in the uh, moat area. So uh, there's, it really is not worth your time to go out of the way to get the zero kills. Although you can do that a lot faster than going for a uh, playthrough that'll set you up to get a Muramasa at least. So, yeah, I mean, if you know what you're doing. Regardless, it's a really good sword. A Abotomaru immediately equips it, and we'll get to see how effective it is later. Later. I knew they'd arrive with a bang. But firing the cannons was a bit much. What's that? Who am I, you ask? I could have sworn I'd already told you. I'm Ryoma. Sakamoto Ryoma. And out there, on that great black ship, are my comrades in arms. I'll tell you. Some days I wonder whether this country will ever enjoy peace again. We fight and squabble for such petty reasons. In the end, no matter who seizes power, people being people will continue to kill one another. Man's most singular, enduring trait is his capacity for hate. I dare say that will always be the case. Nevertheless, 
I still believe it possible for us to overcome our nature and change this tired state of affairs. For I have faith in Japan's future. Hmm. I've been thinking. It seems a waste for a man of your talents to remain a mere shinobi. Might you consider joining me in my labors to serve the Heavenly Sun? It would be an honor to have you. And you have an option here. You can abandon the way of Shinobi if you so desire. We've already completed our mission, so at this point, we are free to do what we want with our life if we decide that uh, we no longer want to be a Shinobi. Eh, right here. How about we say it would be an honor to serve? This really does not matter. It does not affect anything in the game as a whole. It just slightly alters the uh, ending text of this chapter. It would be an honor to serve. You will. Splendid. Then tonight you shall enjoy a celebratory feast aboard our ship. Hmm. <sighs> the sun rises. Someday it shall rise over a Japan free of strife and conflict. Have faith, my friend, for I feel that day is near. Before we get our lovely credit sequence, I thought it just might be worth it to cut back to the SFC version to see how it plays out if you've gotten 100 kills, or at least more kills than I got in the HD version, which you, that was none, but that's not the point I'm trying to make here. What a joke. So if we let a man who'd sacrifice his very humanity lead our land. Hmm? Well done, my friends. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Huh? Who am I? I thought you knew. I am Ryoma Sakamoto. Oh my god, I, I'm so sorry I got the better. Ryoma Sakamoto. Oh, Jesus Christ. A little bit of levity there for you at the end of this chapter. I have friends on that ship. You know, it's kind of sad. We struggle and fight over the temporary rule of an artificial nation. Why go to war for such a fleeting goal? Why sacrifice so many lives? It's kind of silly, is it not? But, for better or for worse, such seems to be our nature as people. We can't change that any more than we could change the past. But I know that one day everyone will live here in peace. I have faith in that. But what a waste. I'm surprised a man as such as yourself is Shinobi. What do you think? Why don't you join me? And, once again, what do you think? I am Shinobi. That's the choice we'll be making in this playthrough. It really doesn't matter. It barely affects anything. I understand. You have your own path to follow. As you can see, Ryoma doesn't take it too harshly. The sun is coming up. One day, the land of rising sun will see a new dawn as well. I'm sure of it. And we return to our credit sequence in progress.
And so it was that the shinobi of the Emma clan succeeded in rescuing Sakamoto Ryoma from Ode Castle. And with that, that is the, uh, what is it, the Twilight of Edo Japan chapter. I always just call it the Ninja chapter, but I'm trying to be accurate to the actual names given here. We'll, uh, leave our, uh, save that I made for the mission abandonment route, uh, and may we'll probably come back to that later when I can, uh, figure out the right level to be at to defeat Hayate at the end. For now, though, that is the ending of that uh, chapter. Uh, Sakamoto Ryoma is actually a very, very major uh, historical figure from Japan in the 1800s that I know nothing about. So uh, if you want to look him up, look him up on Wikipedia. You might learn something. For now, though, we are going to move on to the next chapter of the game. You already know which one it is. That's right. The Town With No Name. See you then.